Hello everybody and welcome to another installment of the Damage Control Assistant Senior Listed Curriculum. I'm Lieutenant Timothy Mueller and today we're going to be going through Chapter 8, Lesson 1, where we talk about dynamic stability rather than what we've seen before with static stability. So let's get started. All right, now, if you remember back in Chapter 1 or Chapter 2, I mentioned uh, that there are several different types of stability. You have statical stability, initial stability, dynamic stability, just to name a few. Well, we're going to start talking about dynamic stability. Everything we've seen before now has been mostly static stability. So when does dynamic stability really come into play? Well, if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, uh, this is not all the conditions. Anything that causes any instantaneous motion of the ship to the side has, to, has uh, relations in dynamic stability. But we have wind personnel crowding, crane ops, rudder at high speed, and like I said, there's several other things that can make a ship go into a dynamic stability realm. But we are going to consider these more often than anything else in these videos. Now, before talking about dynamic stability in a ship sense, which is this graph over here, I'm going to start talking about it with an analogous, uh, analogous system. And that's going to be a spring mass damper system right here. So imagine you have a ceiling, just straight up right here, and then you have a spring that's being held by that ceiling. Now, uh, if it's just the spring itself, then it's going to find its equilibrium point at some point. That little point where the end of the spring is, we're going to consider that to be our uh, initial condition of our ship. Then if we add a mass to that, we know that there's going to be some force of gravity pulling down on that spring. So it's going to make that spring displace a little bit more until the force pulling up on the string, or sorry, on the spring is the same as the force of gravity down on the mass. So if we take that mass and we attach it to that spring, but we just very slowly apply that mat, that, uh, the force, then we know that the spring isn't going to uh, bounce up and down very much. It's going to slowly extend until that force of the spring equals the force down of gravity. But what if we take that exact same thing and we just put the mass on the end of that spring and then just release it? Well, we know that it's, instead of just slowly going to an equilibrium point, it's going to extend, it's going to go past that equilibrium point and go even lower. But now, because it's gone lower, the force of gravity is not as much as the force that's being exerted up by the spring. So it's going to start oscillating. And that spring and the mass itself is going to be dissipating energy through uh, sheer friction with the wind as well as drag forces. And eventually, over time, it's going to even out to some equilibrium point. When we go to ship stability, pretending that we have all these forces that are, in, that are immediately and fully impacted onto the ship, that full displacement of the spring, so the furthest it ever goes, that's going to be what's called our angle of maximum roll. And then that equilibrium point that the ship eventually evens out to, that's going to be what's called our angle of semi-permanent heel, or just angle of heel. I mentioned before in other chapters, heel is a semi-permanent angle of inclination, where list is a permanent angle of inclination. Healing is caused by external forces, list is by internal forces. Now we're getting into all these external forces that can make a ship heel over to an angle. Now, to get into dynamic stability of an actual vessel itself, we need to know its statical stability. And we've already learned all about this in this full load curve. We talked about it in chapter four and subsequent tr uh, chapters after that. Now, we just put one more step on top of this uh, axis here, and we have this red line. This red line, it looks just like a cosine correction curve that we've seen in chapter four, but here it's an inclining moment curve or an inclining arm curve. So in green, we have this writing arm curve, and that is all the writing arms and all the energy that's trying to write the ship back to, in this case, even keel. And then red, this inclining arm, is everything that's trying to push the ship over to 90 degrees and capsizing. How can we tell if this ship, this generic ship right here, is going to survive this generic inclining event here? Let's say this is like a 60 knot beam wind, would this ship be able to survive this event? 
Now we have to go into angle of heel and angle of maximum roll, like I mentioned a couple seconds ago. So to start off explaining this chart, we have this A here. So A is this triangle where the inclining moment is greater than the writing moment. This is going to be our inclining energy. When we talk about energy, we have to use a term in calculus called integration, where we basically find the area under the curve. But in order to do all these lessons in this chapter, we're not going to use calculus itself. We're going to use some very close approximations so we can get quick answers in case we actually need to find this information very, very quickly. So just think, for A, we're thinking of all this, I call it bad energy, all the energy that is trying to capsize the ship over. At this point here, there's much more of an inclining arm than there is a writing arm. So we know that the ship is going to start inclining over and over and over until it hits some point here. We're going to get into that in a second, but just know that this A, this alpha, is this triangle here. And we're going to call that our inclining energy, or as I make it a little bit easier, bad energy. Now, where bad energy is the area where the inclining moment or the inclining energy is greater than the writing energy, everything where the writing energy and the writing arm is greater than the inclining energy or arm is going to be our reserve dynamic stability. So all of this right here, this B and E, is basically the ship's ability to, with, to withstand anything that comes from this alpha. B here is the point, so it's this triangle, and it is bounded by the full load curve right here, the inclining energy curve, where the full load is greater than the inclining, and then this third boundary to it is the angle of maximum roll. We'll get to that in a second. But this B is defined as the, the exact same area here in this triangle, but of good energy, because now we have more uh, writing moment than we have inclining moment. This area in B is the exact same as the area in A. But A was, as I said, bad energy, trying to incline the ship. B is trying to right the ship. This point here, this D, is that angle of maximum roll. So if you think back to that spring example that I mentioned before, that would be the uh, most extreme displacement of the spring after just putting that weight on the spring and then just letting go. So when it goes all the way down, that would be our angle of maximum roll. After that spring oscillates and all that energy is dissipated, so in the spring, I mentioned this due to friction and fluid drag, that the spring eventually levels out to a spot. In a ship, in the water, the uh, the vessel causes waves to either side that dissipates the energy. After all that dissipation, it's going to settle out at an equilibrium point, Charlie, or C. This is going to be our angle of semi-permanent heel. If you look at the graph itself, we see that the inclining moment, which is trying to incline the ship, equals the writing moment, which is trying to write the ship back up. So if we're coming along, we have this immediate uh, hit, we'll say it's a 100 knot beam wind, so it immediately hits us on the beam. It's going to force us all the way, or actually, along this axis, it's going to force us all the way over. We're going to hit this healing point, but the ship's, uh, it has momentum going with it. So, just like the spring in the mass, it's going to go past that equilibrium point, all the way to a point where the ship has the same amount of energy pushing it back as the wind did in pushing us through the heel. So the ship is going to go from zero all the way to, we'll say it's a 40 degrees, all the way to 40 degrees, and then now it goes back. It's going to oscillate back. But it's not going to go all the way to zero because we still have energy coming this way and energy has been dissipated in making the waves. So it's basically just going to oscillate back and forth however many times, getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it eventually evens out right at that point of semi-permanent heel. Now, if we have any more reserve dynamic stability, it's going to be in this echo. So if we had this inclining moment become larger and larger and larger, let's say it goes from 100 knot beam wind to 150 knot beam wind, then this line would go up. We'll say it goes up to about here. As you see, we've increased our angle of roll, or I'm sorry, our angle of semi-permanent heel, which makes sense. We have a stronger wind, so we'd expect the ship to be leaning over further. Then we need to account for all this additional energy 
So instead of this alpha being here, we now have all of this if we increase the wind speed, which means we would have to increase this delta to match all of that area. So it would be something right around here, just eyeballing it. Now that E, that echo, would only be this little sliver right here. And that's how much uh, you can think of resistance the ship has to further combat any more uh, serious events. So if you go from maybe 60 to 100 to 150, you can see how much less reserve dynamic stability you have as you do these charts. Now, later on in this chapter, we're going to talk about dynamic stability when we're in a damaged state. But to introduce the concept right now, we're going to be in a full load state. Ships are always manufactured, especially Navy ships, to have certain uh, criteria when it comes to dynamic stability. There's a wind criteria. There is uh, crane ops, depending on what kind of cranes they have. And there's certain rudder considerations in order to actually build the hull itself. We're going to get into that later on in this chapter. But right now, just remember, you have bad energy, good energy, where the areas equal each other, that's going to be your angle of maximum roll. Then where the curves cross each other, that's going to be your settling out point. That's going to be your point of semi-permanent heel. Semi-permanent heel is always going to be less than your angle of maximum roll. Now, the question might be, what if you don't have enough uh, reserve dynamic stability in order to combat Let's say you had like a 200 knot wind and it was for whatever reason, way up here. You say, well, you have all of this bad energy and then you only have this much good energy. We'll get into that in the dyna or the damaged dynamic stability video, but it basically means that you're going to have all this energy putting the ship over, you are going to have a point of heel, but you're never actually going to be able to get back to that because the ship itself can't impart as much energy that's been put into it by the wind. So in this situation, the ship would capsize. We're going to see how our reserve dynamic stability changes during different conditions and different loading conditions. But that's going to be for another video. Until then, I'm Lieutenant Timothy Mueller, and I hope you have a great day.